Historically, women's position in the Arab Muslim world has been debated, directed, or defined for them. In a country like Jordan, for example, their role and responsibility has been governed by a, a monarchical nationalist vision, and b, the gendered ideals of a patriarchal society. The result is that Jordanian women's voices are yet to be fully heard, justly expressed, and truly mobilized. In regards to my first point, take for example Queen Rania's call for greater investment in girls' and women's education. This is what happens when you educate girls. When a girl goes to high school, she's equipped and empowered and inspired to break the cycle of poverty. And when you break the cycle of poverty, you raise nations. If you educate a girl, you really change a nation. Um, when, you, when a girl gets educated, she gains confidence and self-respect. She delays marriage and has uh, less children. The situation in Jordan in the past few decades has been as such that education is made available to a typical ambitious girl like Salma. Salma finishes high school, enters university, receives a degree, gets a job, and then looks for a spouse to start a family. By the time she is 30, she realizes that her surrounding society is casting this dark shadow of spinisterhood over her. Which brings me to my second point. The most timely example that echoes the ethos of patriarchy is Muhammad al-Hajaya's call to promote polygamy in Jordan. Al-Hajaya, founder of the committee to support polygamy, has recently taken up his third wife to lead by example and to encourage polygamy as a practical solution to the growing numbers of spinisters in Jordan. Selma is one of 87,000 single Jordanian women who are age 30 and over. Women like Selma are perceived by men like Al-Hajaya as a threat to the moral fabric of Jordanian society and a danger to the institution of marriage. The solution to this social predicament is to control these women by using Islam as a pretext to thrust them into polygamous marriages. A serious effort must be made to highlight the concept of polygamy as an Islamic teaching. It existed before Islam, but Islam organized it and introduced it to resolve a wide range of social problems. And what shocks me is that some fight polygamy and call it a home-wrecking tool. What is interesting to me is that the Hajaya men and polygamy supporters are discussing the destiny of their daughters, wives and sisters. And I think we are in for some interesting findings should we are able to hear the personal stories of these women and their perspective on an issue that would directly affect the daily dynamics of their everyday lives. The empowering stories of Arab women we hear today are still exceptions. They are not yet the norm. Women still suffer and struggle with the patriarchal status quo. They are shackled not by the chains of some abstract thing called patriarchy, but by the very own hands of their own husbands, brothers, fathers, and uncles. Their tongues are muted and their voices are muffled. Are you a woman who is or has been involved in a polygamous marriage? Are you a woman who is trying to find ways to deal with society's definition of your status as a spinister? And would you consider entering a marriage as a second, third, or fourth wife? Are you a woman who has something to say and a personal story to share? Please drop a text or upload a video about your reflections and responses around the question of polygamy.